Howdy everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Just wanted to let you know, i um, going to do a review, I guess you could call it, on this product here, the Ledger 9. If you look closely, if you can see that little writing on the box, it's a typical display that you get on um, these devices, which can be used as wallets, cold storage wallets, hard storage wallets for your cryptocurrency. I'm not going to get into product demos. You can probably find a lot on YouTube for that, but I'll just give you my brief opinion of them. Um, when you plug them in, you if you're new to the world of crypto, you will be given um, or needing to put on a pass uh, a hard coded pin, eight up to eight digits plus. It will make you go through a twenty five a twenty four word uh, word phrase recovery, which probably the whole thing of the, the thing I use was the most, I guess call it annoying, but that's part of the world of crypto and it's for your own safety. And then once you get all that configured, uh, when you open up the box, the next step is to then uh, download the uh, software from start.ledger.com, I believe, or something like that. You'll get it in the box. But you download the software called Ledger Live. Once you get the uh, Nano uh, started or initialized um, then you can start using the software the ledger live to uh, install different um, cryptocurrency or coin apps onto the actual wallet this thing right here connects via like you you USB um, which comes with a box and then from there what you can do is install whatever crypto pair or cryptocurrencies you want obviously uh, bitcoin's the most popular you got litecoin and bitcoin cash and all these other ones smaller ones as well you do have uh offerings of both zcash and monero uh on these devices um out of box it looks like you can receive uh zcash uh, i haven't tried it yet but that's the only private one that seems to work out of box but you still need to install the app for Zcash in order to do it. That's what I'm uh, surmising here. I can't confirm that. Uh, in terms of the Monero, uh, I believe you'd have to use the actual Monero app that you download from the Monero website. But it, sh I'm, it may be compatible with um, the Ledger device. Uh, also, you can install, as I said, Bitcoin. So the thing to do is um, uh, be, be very aware that you can only store a limited amount of uh, these crypto apps on the devices. The memory seems to be severely limited, so I tried up to five of these crypto apps, but you know I'm probably going to just stay with, for now, uh, Bitcoin, Zcash uh, for out-of-box transfers, uh, and then fool around with the Monero, but I prefer to do Bitcoin and Monero. Seems to be the the, uh, the popular combo for uh, crypto transacting and storage. Um, also, you can do um, uh, transfers of sending and receiving in the crypto that you want. Just got to make sure you, when you install the app, that you have active before you choose that crypto. So what you do is you... Um, can set up a QR code, which is like a bar scan code, and then you can then copy that code or the actual digits and numbers, the actual code itself, and then send that off to whoever you want. Now, uh, to do the sending, oh, that's for, sorry, for receiving, so it will generate the QR code for you. When you send it, you can scan in the code uh, the QR code right in the um, Ledger Live app. So you can do that as well. It's fairly easy once you understand how to transfer money back and forth uh, between crypto pairs. Here's some caveats when it comes to uh, specifically Bitcoin and uh, the blockchain. Bitcoin, uh, when you get a wallet code, uh, do realize that if you use that, uh, on for transacting with sending or receiving that code will then be put on the um, blockchain so 
people will be able to attract that code on the blockchain. So you can go to a website, just type in the wallet code for Bitcoin, and then be able to trace all the transactions that you've had for that uh, code. They won't know who you are, but they'll be able to um, track all your transactions on the blockchain. So from what I see, what you can do is, if you just stay with Bitcoin as the more popular way uh, to transact, because as I said, it's the most popular crypto pair, what you can do, sorry, cryptocurrency, the coin, most popular coin, um, what you could do is you could have a private wallet code on your, 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 your ledger, and then you keep that, but you don't tell the world or put that on the blockchain at all. That's just you for your own storage. And then you can dynamically create other um, digital wallets or, or wallet codes for, let's say, Bitcoin. And then you can use that to transact with for receiving or sending with. Um, and then at some point, you could probably delete it and then dynamically create a new wallet code as well. So when you get your uh, money in, in Bitcoin, let's say, you receive it, then you just transfer your term master code as well that nobody needs to know about because it's privately kept on the device and it's not sent back anywhere unless you uh, publicly put it on the blockchain. So it's pretty ingenious how it works. Um, I think it, it's going to be kind of not tricky, but to have like a second wallet code for let's say Bitcoin, then just dispose of it and then create a new one. It's fairly easy, but you can name it whatever you want, but it's just an extra step that um, might become painful. Um, I still have to confirm with either Zcash or Monero if you can generate these wallet codes and they're anonymous and they, they're not traceable. I, I believe they are not traceable, but, um, you know, you, you don't know. But I think using Bitcoin is the way to go about it because Bitcoin is the most popular um, coin out there and using the methodology I just explained is probably your safest bet. I'm sure there's other people out there that may have better ideas, but if you do, just comment away and let me know. Um, I like to learn about these things because I'm fairly new at it. But that's how you do it. Um, I'm probably going to better explain it um, on my Python course with the algo trading for with cryptocurrency now that I have a new way to uh, transact. Also, I forgot to mention when you buy Bitcoin, uh, there's many options as well that you can uh, trend, uh, fund the uh, wallet with via uh, these different services. There's a popular one that you can do anonymously called Shapeshift. I don't know the transaction fees. I don't know if it's trustworthy, but it's on there if you need it. There's a bunch of other ones like Coin Mama as well. So there's different ways to do it uh, to transfer uh, for Bitcoin to get your from your cash uh, from let's say a Visa debit card uh, onto a, a Bitcoin. So you can you you can do that as well. Um, so. It's pretty exciting. This is the future of uh, money, I think, because uh, the utility will be built as governments, if they continue building up the debts that they're at, they may have no other choice but to do things like bail-ins and cap how much money you're going to have access to, even though it's your own money, but they may do it. But these kind of uh, devices, these ledgers, um, will change everything because it's your own wallet and there's no third party involved other than you and your other Bitcoin wallet that you're going to uh, trade with or transact with is a better way to put it. And the commission fees, as far as I could tell on uh, Bitcoin, it's 0.05%, which is like really nothing. And then also with um, for Binance or any other uh, exchange that you plan to uh, trade with, uh, it's 0.1%. Uh, OKX, which again, I still have to verify, but I learned that they're... Uh, as low as 0.03%, which is like, again, nothing. But again, uh, I've done my research so far on OKX, and uh, I'm not sure if they're fully trustworthy. They say they are, but um, there's been complaints on Reddit about how you can't withdraw <laughs> out of the uh, account on OKX. Uh, but I'll, I'll test those out, out when I um, get to them. So that's pretty well. I just wanted to give you a review or it's not really a review, but a process, but I'll tell you the, the, um, customer service at Ledger seem to be pretty spot on. They're pretty good. Very, very responsive. No doubt on that. And it was pretty straightforward. Um, I do think that these devices will be a threat to governments because of, um, 
because of, you know, you can do things anonymously now and, and there's no tracing on it. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Anyways, I just wanted to let you know about it and uh, let me know what you think. If there's any areas that you think I can improve on in terms of transacting or transferring or funding, let me know. On these devices, the Ledger Nano S from France. Talk to you later.